from the gun violence epidemic to the impact of social media. Our next guest says we're in the midst of the decline of American childhood. Veteran journalist and historian Todd Brewster joins us now with his new book. It is a collection of hundreds of archival photos that tell the stories of the country's youth. Todd, good morning. Thanks for bringing this book to us. Um, explain a little bit before we go through some of the photographs inside the idea that the United States in some ways created the concept of childhood and as you put it in the book is now presiding over its demise. Yes, first, thanks for having me on, Willie. Um, this is a, an idea that I sort of came up with as I began to investigate the idea of what the, what the experience has been for children in American history. And, you know, I mean, we were the first Enlightenment nation, and therefore we are a, a, the first experiment in sort of uh, providing the dignity of the self and the growth of the self and the notion that, that um, each of us has a, a, a something to contribute to um, our historical times. And so when you think about that and you think about the uh, notion that America, that ch child Childhood is our period of our development. The notion that there's a separate period that uh, nurtures that childhood expression um, was distinctively American. So let's take a look at some of the photographs inside. The first one we're going to put on the screen is titled Messenger Boy. What are we looking at here? Well, you know, um, uh, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, there was a lot of focus on uh, child labor, um, factories uh, in particular, where children, this boy is the age of 14, he's not in the factory, but he works for Western Union delivering photographs and, uh, I'm sorry, delivering uh, messages. And he um, uh, is just, a, it's a wonderful photograph taken by Lewis Hine. You may be familiar with the Lewis Hine photographs of yeah. child labor, mostly in factories. But this boy, uh, 14 years of age, and Hine wrote on the, on the little caption sheet that he had with the photograph that he smokes, uh, drinks, and visits houses of prostitution. You may wonder, well, what, how is that part of the nurturing of childhood? Well, you know, the focus on child labor and the child labor acts of the late early 20th centuries that focused the tension on, on what we were doing to our children by putting them into the factories um, uh, shows our attention to trying to protect that nurturing period. You know, only yeah, about 7% um, yeah. of teenagers in the late 19th century actually attended school. Uh, mm -hmm. The rest of them were either working in factories or on, fo on farms. Mm -hmm. Put to hey, work, uh, and as you say, they're living hard already. <laughs> Let's look at another photograph, kids mimicking Beatles Abbey Road. What are we seeing here? Oh, this is a fairly recent photograph. So the photographer, Julie Blackman, was uh, shut in with for COVID with the rest of her family and um, they were watching the Beatles documentary that a lot of people were watching during that time and uh, their, her niece came over and said that she was going to go out and sell some Girl Scout cookies and the kids had an idea. They remembered this this uh, crosswalk here that mimicked the, the uh, image seen on the cover of Abbey Road so they went out and did it. Just so something about the, the, the sense of wonder and creativity that, um, that children have that uh, often get sort of drained out of them by the time they become adults and how important that has been, uh, really, the book focused on how important that's been in American history. I mean, a lot of the great inventions, the great businesses, great inv innovations, great cultural achievements were originally the sparks of childhood imagination. And so when I speak about the dangers of social media and gun violence and the bringing of adult worries into the childhood, um, uh, that's, uh, that's what we're sacrificing, is that moment of specialness, that protected period that children are able to, their minds are able to wander and come up with the ideas that turn out to drive our, our culture and in some cases our businesses and our success. This next one is really striking. You spend a lot of time kind of looking at each face in the photograph from an orphanage. What's the context for this one? Uh, this one's an interesting one. It's an orphanage um, in Baltimore that's going to run by the Oblate Sisters. Um, the orphanage was started in the early, uh, as, as a school uh, in the early 19th century for African American children when the ch children were not allowed to be, uh, black children were not allowed to be educated. It later became also an orphanage after the Civil War since so many children lost their parents. This picture is from 1910. Um, the children um, who are wearing the aprons there, all of them are, are all orphans. And you'll notice something very interesting in that um, they, uh, several of them have dolls, but they're white dolls. Um, and you can see, therefore, kind of uh, the, the image of racism uh, in a picture that's really ostensibly just a class picture of orphans. 
Todd, I remember when you did our century with mm -hmm. Peter Jennings. It was very much a photograph-driven book, and yeah. you've done that here too. But I have a more substantive question. The birth rate is declining mm -hmm. radically mm -hmm. in America. What does that say to you? Well, you know, that's a very interesting question. I haven't been asked that one before. I would say that it's, I, I guess what I would say the concern I would have is that there's a lack of optimism. Mm -hmm. um, and we noticed the birth rate drop in Europe, for instance, after the Second World War, and there had plenty of reason to feel less optimistic about the future in Europe at that time as well. Right. And I would say that that's a discouraging sign, too. I mean, I know there's a lot of people and young people who are now either putting off uh, uh, having children or deciding they're not going to have children at all. And I mean, in large part because of fear about the future, about the climate change, about the uh, where we're headed as a country, um, uh, which is very depressing when you think about it. I mean, we've had, you know, we've been a child-centered nation. Some of that kind of optimism and enthusiasm that we embrace as part of the American personality, I think, is, is our, our sort of childishness that we, <laughs> we, we put in the central, center to the American idea. And so I'm worried about that. Um, and I think the book, you know, focuses on how important it's mm -hmm. been to emphasize children throughout American history, what they've meant to us. Will we be a different America if we don't have that child centered focus? Todd, it's interesting you say that because obviously America is still held up, and, I, and from all I've traveled all around the world, I don't, think, I, I don't think I've ever lived in a country uh, where children are at the center of education as much as they are in the United States, certainly compared to you know, where I come from in Great Britain or, or places I've lived in Asia. Uh, and it's interesting to hear you think they're losing that. I, I just want to throw up the photo of children. Babies testing food because this one intrigued me when mm -hmm. I looked at this. Is this is this like they're testing it for mass consumption purposes, or are they just having a fun time testing cakes? Oh no, no. This is a, this is your photograph actually from Look magazine. I mean, a lot of these photographs are from the Library of Congress collection, which I mined uh, very carefully um, for images of children. This was shot by Harold Rothstein, a very wonderful photographer for Look, um, and it was uh, it was a photo. Uh, Gerber, I believe it was, uh, was was testing out new um, uh, new dishes for uh, babies, and um, they were trying new flavors and new new combinations in order to. Uh, uh, making the child's diet a little bit more varied. And so Look Magazine had the idea of maybe p portraying that by looking at um, uh, creating a picture here with children um, who are all in, uh, in a kind of testing lab here uh, trying out different foods. Now, uh, it's a cute picture, very interesting, and I think Look, Look which was a wonderfully inventive magazine, had a, a great uh, idea in doing it. But it also shows how children um, are sometimes used as sort of uh, uh, props for um, our, our, our businesses and, um, um, you know, a lot of part of the 20th century was um, the exploitation of children in, in show business and in other avenues that, you know, raises concerns about, about, um, about whether we're really appreciating children for their childhood uh, specialness or whether we're exploiting it. And it's a great shot. The new book is titled American Childhood, A Photographic History. We've only scratched the surface. There are more than 200 photos inside. Todd Brewster, congratulations on the book, and thanks for being here this morning. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.